In the previous tutorial, I'll put a link here, we created a camera device object. In this tutorial, we're going to be getting the camera ID, which is required for the creation of that camera device object. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials, my name's Nigel. Okay, so we're going to get, get the camera ID. The camera ID represents a ca particular camera on your device. So modern cameras can have, have rear-facing and front-facing cameras, so in theory they, would be, they have the camera ID for each one. Okay, let's make a start. First thing I'm going to do is create a string member, probably here, that represents the camera ID. The string, I'll just call it M camera ID. Now I need to create a new method. Oh, you can create that anywhere. I'm going to call the method setup camera. So setup camera, as well as getting the camera ID, I'm going to be able to. Uh, I'm going to need to do another a number of configurations for that. But just for this particular tutorial, we're going to get the camera ID. So I'll call this setup camera. Now it's going to take a couple of values. Um, one's going to be the width. Another one will be the height. Now for this particular tutorial, we don't need to use the width and height arguments, but it will be required for implementing other functionality in this method. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is create camera manager. Second, I forgot to spell camera. It's not good for my. Okay, we're going to need to cast it. We can get this from Android OS. Get system service. And go to context, and there's a member camera service. Okay, once we've got the camera camera manager um, and the camera manager object we can then get a list of the camera IDs. This camera, uh, Nexus 5X, we have a couple, it's got two cameras, front facing and rear facing. So I'm gonna traverse through them. I want the rear facing camera for this video camera application. So I'll put string for the camera IDs we're gonna traverse through. And then we call get ca camera manager. And as you can see here, we've got get camera list ID, so it's a, uh, a list of strings representing each camera on your device. Let's call that. Okay, we're going to need to put a try catch loop around it in case anything goes wrong because we are making a call into the camera device itself. That's done, so camera exception. In case anything goes wrong. Okay, what I want to do now I've got a camera ID. For each ID, we can get the characteristics of that particular camera, and that's represented by the camera characteristics. So let's get that camera correct characteristics. It's actually called camera characteristics. I'm not creating a member called camera characteristics. And for the creation of it, we will call, it'll be camera manager again. And get camera characteristics. In this case, we're going to have to pass the string representing the camera ID. And that's provided to us when we're traversing the for loop. I don't know why it went all the way out there. Okay, now we've got the camera characteristics. As I mentioned, I only want to use the rear-facing camera. Um, if the first camera ID is a front-facing camera, I just want to skip it. So let's do a check for that. And I'll be calling my camera characteristics object, get. And camera characteristics has got a member for lens facing. So we just want to check to see if the lens facing is a front lens. If it is, just skip it. 
the lens facing front just continue in other words skip it or if it's not we can actually assign our camera ID to the camera ID that we're currently traversing and then just return out of that method as such Okay, that's it. Um, now that we've created the setup camera method, I can now call it from a couple of places once our texture view is being created. So let's go back up to the top here. So when the surface texture view is available, it gives me widths and heights. So those are the arguments I'm going to be passing into my new method. So I might as well call it here. I don't need, don't need that toast anymore. So it's set up camera and we'll just pass the width and the height of our texture view there. And we're going to have to do that in one more place. That's going to be when we turn the device on, on the resume method. And just down here, we'll call the setup camera as well. And in this case, if the texture view is available, we can get the width and the height directly from the texture view. So this is called a get width and get height as such. Okay, that's it. So all I wanted to do was to get the camera ID for a particular camera on there. That's required for actually connecting to the um, required to get to, for connecting to actually connecting to the camera device and it's required for selecting which camera device we want. Okay, so what I want to do now is let's just check to see what camera ID we're getting assigned. So let me just put a breakpoint. Let me just put a breakpoint in here. And we'll just traverse down one thing just to ensure we are getting a camera ID and just see what it is. So I'm going to run debug here. Okay, device is now turned on. Okay, let's step through that. Okay, so we're now traversing through the camera ID list. So uh, I've got my first camera ID. I'm now creating a camera character characteristics object that represents all the properties in that particular camera device. Now I'm checking to see if it's a front-facing lens because I just want to use the rear-facing lens for my particular application. So it's not, it's rear facing. And as you can see, the camera ID happens to be zero. So it's a string value representing zero as such. So I am getting a value back. I'm happy with that. We can continue running the application, which isn't going to do too much at this stage. Okay, that concludes getting the camera ID, which is required for selecting a particular camera on your phone itself. And this is also required for creating a connection to the camera. We do need this value before we can actually connect to the camera as well, which is why we're doing this up before we actually call the camera device as well. Okay, that concludes this particular episode of the uh, Camera 2 API video application. If you want to keep getting updates of this particular tutorial series or my other tutorial series that I'm working on, click on that subscribe button down below. And if you want to be informed of all the updates I make, the tutorials I make, um, any announcements or anything, you can see I've got clickable on a PC or my social media accounts, so you can click on those. And I just want to make a special mention to my website above as well. So that's where all my material gets all put together. So as well as the video, I've got the details of where I put the code changes up in GitHub. And I've also break the changes down with brief descriptions of each change I make. So that's, that's an important resource. So if, if you want further information, I do recommend it go to my website as well. That's all for this one. Bye for now.